Shalom and welcome to Darche Choshech, a linguistic analysis of the wrong ways of Proverbs. Today we're going to discuss the first word which is translated as fool. There are a few of these within the context of Proverbs, so today we will discuss the first word which is translated as fool. And that word is evil. Proverbs 1 7. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So along this pathway, we have seen first the person who is uh, simple. He's sort of empty-headed. He's waiting for anything to come along. We've discussed sins that are made by ignorance. And now we begin to see that the fool not only is empty-headed and makes ignorant mistakes, mistakes, but he's going to despise the wisdom and instruction that can save him. Proverbs 10, 14. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Proverbs 14, 9. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Again, this kind of fool, a veal, he is mocking sin. He, he's not going to take the instruction of Yahweh, the instruction of Torah seriously uh, as sin is defined, but he's just going to make fun of it. Proverbs 15.5 A fool despiseth, despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. Proverbs 20 verse 3 It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. So he's inserting himself into situations where he ought not be. The noun form of this kind of foolishness is evelet, Proverbs 14, 17. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. But the simple, the petty that we discussed in the first lesson, inherit folly. But the prudent are crowned with knowledge. So again, here is a simple person. They are just sort of an open uh, space. Their mind is open to anything being planted there. They will inherit folly. There's a progression from the simple, the open, to uh, the person who doesn't decide to study wisdom and doesn't decide to follow his father's instruction. And his inheritance is this foolishness. Proverbs 19.3 The foolishness of man perverted his way, and his heart fretteth against Yahweh. In Psalm 119, we see that all the words for the word of Yahweh, the word of God for the Torah, are all about talking about walking in a correct direction, being enclosed in a proper space. The foolish person, his way is twisted off the correct path. Proverbs 24, 9. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. When our thoughts begin to go astray, that is foolish. And Yeshua taught us about that. Another word which comes from this direct root is ulai. And ulai means maybe. So the person who is empty-headed, he begins to entertain uh, the possibilities of things which ought not to be. Now, Eli is not a 100% negative word. It can be a positive word in terms of uh, perhaps something good will happen. But the idea is that this person is beginning to be drawn off in a direction. Perhaps this, perhaps that. Genesis 16.2 And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, Yahweh hath estranged me from bearing I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Joshua 9, 7 And the men of Israel said to the, unto the Hivites, Peradventure, perhaps, ye dwell among us, and how shall we make a league with you? It is into the realm of possibility. The parent root for these words is Aleph Lamed, 
and we could spend a lot of time doing all the related words and the cognates. We're just going to touch on a few of them briefly so you get the expression of what is the idea. The Aleph and the Lamed. The Aleph represents the ox head and the strength and the authority. The Lamed is the shepherd's staff and it's the um, direction, the leading of the person, the sheep. So together we see that an authority is leading the person in a direction. And you can have a good and godly authority, as we'll see in a minute, or you can be drawn off in a wrong direction. And the problem with the fool is that he is now beginning to not just be empty-headed and simple. He's not just making mistakes out of ignorance. He's being drawn now into a direction. One of the words which has this parent root, um, you know, is ale. And it can be God with a big G, God with a little G, or just simply power. You are certainly familiar with the term El Shaddai, God Almighty. Genesis 14:18, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. He was the priest of the Most High God, El Elyon, the Most High God. Genesis 17.1 And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, Yahweh appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the Almighty El, Almighty God, El Shaddai. Walk before me and be thou perfect. I want you to know that Yahweh refers to himself as El. Exodus 15.11 who is like unto thee, O Yahweh, among gods? This is a small g and implies that there are other uh, mighty, powerful ones who lead people in directions. Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, and doing wonders? Genesis 31:29. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spake unto me yesternight, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. The same two letters with a slightly different vowel, uh, L, is a preposition that means to or towards. Remember the picture of the fool, this evil, is that he's beginning to move in a direction which is not a godly direction. Genesis 1.9 and God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Genesis 24:11. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. So here this preposition is translated as by, but they went, they're outside the city, towards the well, near the well, by the well. There is a verb with this root, ya'al, and it means to be foolish. Numbers 12, 11. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. I just wanted uh, to note that in the uh, Septuagint, it's very clear that this is a sin of ignorance. And since we're on this path and we have seen that one of the ways on the path is sinning out of uh, not knowing and not understanding. This is the incident where, uh, where Aaron and Miriam have risen up against Moses um, and, and gone before the Lord and said, are we not prophets also? And we see also that Miriam is afflicted with leprosy at that time. The uh, Greek translation there is um, ignoisamen. In other words, we have done this out of ignosis. We, ha we didn't have the knowledge. We did it out of ignorance. So uh, it's similar to the previous idea of shagaga. This verb ya'al also means to initiate an action, to take something upon yourself. In other words, you begin to go in a direction. Genesis 18.31 And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. 
Her adventure, there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. As you know from the story of uh, Abraham trying to make a bargain with the father about uh, saving Sodom and Gomorrah. 1 Samuel 17:39, And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go. But he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. So the small boy, David, is trying on the uh, adult size armor of Saul to see if he's going to use it to fight Goliath. So he begins to try something. Uh, he made a prudent decision that the armor wasn't going to work, and he took it off. So out of this root, Aleph Lamed, are many words that you know, uh, Elohim, Eloha, uh, El and Elim. There's a plural of, of gods. There is also the root Allah. I just uh, strongly recommend that you make your own study. The whole concept behind Aleph Lamed is that we begin to move in a direction, we are attracted towards something, uh, perhaps we even begin to become in covenant. And so this is what happens to the fool. He begins to go in a wrong direction. What is the remedy for this fool? Proverbs 14.29 He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalted folly. We need to keep our cool, we need to keep our temper, and not be in a hurry to be angry, because certainly we will say something that will be foolish. Proverbs 15:29, Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Again, always we need to go back to the word of God. We need to hide the word of the Father in our heart, the words of Tanah, the words of the Brit, Kadashah, that we do not sin against God, that we don't go off a path. Yeshua taught Matthew 7, 26, And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. We need to be doers of the word. It's not just that we learn this word and, and we keep it in our mind somewhere, but we need to be acting it out every day that um, we are confirmed in the way that we go and that we don't do anything out of folly, out of our own imagination out of a wrong intention we have the word of god in our heart and we act it out galatians 3 3 are ye so foolish having begun in the spirit are ye now made perfect by the flesh we need to continue to walk by the spirit in order to fulfill the commandments out of our heart we can't fulfill the commandments out of our flesh we must do it out of a revived and renewed heart with the commandments written upon it by the finger of Yahweh. Next time we'll go on to another word. In the meantime, Tasimata Inayim Al Hashamayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.